in 2015 I was working on a project, a solar project, and I suddenly realised this massive technological change that occurred in solar. And so um, I, I got involved in developing this business that invests in large-scale solar projects because I saw it as sort of the inevitable future, if you like. I think to get to the base, the base facts, the great thing about renewables now, five years ago we relied on subsidies to get renewables up. We had the renewable energy legislation here. But right now it's just being driven by economics. If I look at the US, we're, we're big investors. Um, it's purely being dri driven by economics, not by subsidies. Just because if you're a big utility and want to replace an aging coal-fired power station or a nuclear power plant, better to, for you to do a combination of wind, solar and natural gas than build new coal-fired power stations. And that's whether you're Republican or Democrat. We see in the southern states, which are traditionally re Republican, are really driving towards renewables as well. So the debate, we're stuck in the, a debate from five years ago. The story's moved on. So renewables, uh, we're going to get to more than 50% renewable in Australia in the next uh, decade, I think. It's just how we get there. You know, If we continue to have an energy policy vacuum, it's going to be a wild ride. You know, sud Sudden withdrawals of coal capacity, high prices. Um, whereas if we do it in a coordinated way with a measured policy, we can transition in a gradual sense. And that's, that's our challenge at the moment. The story I always tell is when I meet some investors, a couple of them have said to me, um, when I walk in the room, they go, coal is king. So I go, oh, should I just turn around and leave? And I, look, there's absolutely a future for coal and um, natural gas, and gas is going to be particularly important. But it is a transition, and you've got to accept the world is changing and as economics is going to get here.